and against other kinds of Jews who were the problem. Okay, some basic things on how the Hasmoneans celebrated Hanukkah, and then we can see how the rabbis changed it, okay? How did the Hasmoneans celebrate Hanukkah? What was their ceremonies? First of all, did they call it Hanukkah? No. 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 What did they call it? <laughs> because they were writing a letter to the diaspora Jews in Egypt who understand Sukkot and saying that we're celebrating Sukkot. It's just a belated Sukkot. In other words, just as they quote Pinchas and Moshe, they're quoting Sukkot in order to establish a, a, a paradigm. I mean, it's not that they don't believe in it, but part of justification is attaching your new, your new idea, your new dynasty, your new everything, your new holiday to an existing paradigm. So, why would they call it Sukkot? Eight days, right? Because they didn't have the miracle of the vessel of oil. That only is later on in the Gilat Tani. So they wanted eight days for Sukkot. What else did they, what else was Sukkot? <laughs> The, the Maccabees says that that was the first thing they did was to celebrate tabernacle to, to because water to water to water. Water. it was a makeup Sukkot right it was Pesach Sheni Sukkot Sheni make it up makes perfect sense right good what day did they choose to celebrate Sukkot, the belated Sukkot the 25th, hmm? the 25th of Kislev why same day that Antiochus uh, started the whole persecution. Yes, so one of the reasons is that, that in 167, when they put in the statue of Zeus, they did it and they created a celebration on a Greek holiday. We presume, we don't know, but we presume it's the holiday of the winter solstice and connects up to the holiday of the sun. We even have coins of Antiochus with the light of the rays of the sun coming out of its head, which some people shows that he was involved with self-deification by identifying with the sun god. So the Jews are saying, the day you desecrated our temple and turned it to a place of sun worship is the very day, Dafka, that we're going to return it to the worship of the true God. Yay. Good. Yay. <laughs> What's another reason for doing it on Cafe Bikislev? 25th were a big deal in general. Yes, and He's how do we know that? Because, because Christmas is still December. Because in the, I just read this in the third century, some of the Christian bishops got together and they moved. They moved Christmas from the sixth of January to the twenty fifth of December. Some some of them didn't change it, and some of them did. The ones who changed it. One of the reasons they gave was because we want to draw Christians away so they won't celebrate the pagan holiday of the sun. Wait, of course, why, why the 25th? Why was that a... Well, the calendars are not identical to what we have today. Today is, is the 21st or the 22nd, right, of December, when you have the winter solstice. But, of course, we're now already on what we're on the Gregorian calendar. And before that was the Julian calendar, which was with, uh, which is, is Julius uh, Caesar. Caesar. And before that, they had other calendars. So, more or less, it's the winter solstice. It has to do with... It's a natural event. Right? But here, as you explained, it was, a, it was a historical reason for choosing that date to struggle against the natural one. But of course, it can also be a positive one. We are celebrating our celebration of the light. This is what the true light is. Just as Christianity made Jesus as the light unto the world appearing and during the winter solstice. So you can use both positively and negatively. Right? What they did was to celebrate, they did it with processions. And what did they carry in their hands in the processions? Oh. Being right, a translation of fer fersos, because we have it in Greek, we don't have it in Hebrew. Lulavim. And why lulavim? Well, one answer is obvious. What's the less obvious answer? What is the symbol of the lulav? Which Greek god where carries a lulav? Wow. I'm going to check. None of you are wearing Nike tennis shoes. There's no loyalty at all to Michael Jordan. Nike is the goddess of victory, and she always is portrayed holding a lulav. So they may have, they may have been using both Greek symbolism and Jewish symbolism in order to celebrate. The Christians on Palm Sunday are not celebrating a belated Sukkot on Easter. They are celebrating the victory of Jesus over death. The resurrection. It's also a victory parade and procession with the, with the palms. 
So very often these multiple levels of Tame Amitzvot are possible for understanding what. What I want you to see is that the celebration is a public celebration during the day. It's in the streets. It's in the temple. It's celebrating a new dynasty. It's celebrating Yom Ha'atzma'ut, political independence of the Jewish people. Mamasha Yom Ha'atzma'ut in every possible way. It's also, of course, the victory of one group over another group within the Civil War. All of those. Where do you not celebrate whatever Hanukkah was called at the time of the Hasmoneans? At home. It's not a home holiday. It's not a liminal holiday. It's not a nighttime holiday. It's a public holiday because it's celebrating public victories and public values, which is very important. By the way, an interesting thing I just noticed, in Haggai, in the Navi, Haggai says that the date of the dedication of the second temple was the 24th of Kislev. What you're thinking of, Ariel, is the first one, Solomon, was on Sukkot. So Sukkot is not just a belated holiday. Sukkot is the holiday of the dedication of the first temple. The 24th of Kislev is the celebration of the second temple. And this, of course, is the celebration of the Hanukkah Mizbeach, of the rededication of the altar, and therefore of the whole temple, and therefore 